I just got a really cool question, uh, which I've had before from one of our Patreon uh, members. And by the way, if you're not aware, we have a Patreon group. There's all kinds of really cool conversations that go on there that do not make it onto this YouTube channel. But this was something that I've heard from clients of mine as well in consults. So this is my universal ventilation layout. If you were to lay out most ventilation systems this way, it'll work pretty much most of the time. There are exceptions to this. Um, and there are systems that don't work with this layout, and that the, both of those are true. But the question that I got just now is, okay, I understand that I need to have a dehumidifier, and most homes do, because we're, if we're introducing air from outside via constant ventilation, we're going to need to do something about the humidity that comes in, even in Canada, which is where this Patreon member was based. Um, if I'm going to be introducing air from outside and I need to have a dehumidifier, why don't I just have the ERV pull air from outside, ERV, not HRV, uh, and I'm linking a video on screen now about that, and then just feed that air that just came in from outside, since it is the cause of my humidity problems most of the time, feed that directly to the dehumidifier, and then have it go into the house from there. And that sounds like it's a cool idea, and I just wanted to run through the... Um, kind of meaning of how that would work. So here is the way that it works now is the air handler has a coil in it that's supposed to be cooling and drying. We dump the dehumidified air into the supply side because then this thing can cool and dry um, and we're not stealing away the ability for it to, to dry. So then this dehumidifier supplemental, not the primary. The ERV gets dumped into the return so that we can have one filtration level inside the box and one filtration level here right before the air handler. That's all cool. But what this person is talking about is this, basically. So we've got the ERV uh, extracting air from the house. I always recommend this in bathrooms because in my practice, we don't really recommend ERVs most of the time unless you need to replace your bath fans with an ERV. At that point, then we that's what we're using it for is to exhaust from bathrooms. And by the way, if you're not, if you don't believe that that's totally something that you absolutely need to be doing, go check this video out that uh, I made with the manufacturers of ERVs. So then that stale air goes outside. Fresh air comes in. We're feeding the fresh air to the DHU. So the first thing you'd need to do is make sure that the sensor, that is the humidity sensor that activates the dehumidifier, gets in injected into this ductwork between the ERV and the dehumidifier. Otherwise, the DHU will not be able to know until it's way too late that it needs to turn on its compressor and start drying this air that's being fed to it. Um, so if you do that, then the first thing that's going to happen, and by the way, if you didn't do that, if you put the sensor out here in the room, then the, the air would go through here and it would be wet, 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 and it would wet, start wetting everything in the house and start kind of uh, wetting, you know, it'll be building up the humidity, but the humidity, more importantly, will be going into the solid materials, your couches, your curtains, your floor, the drywall, things like that. And then the humidity stat will say, oh, hey, it's humid in here. And you'll have to now play catch up. That's not what you want. So it's here. And the thing about this humidity sensor is that 99%, I don't think I've ever seen one that doesn't do this, but it's based on RH, relative humidity. And if you look at this free tool, which I'm linking on screen right now, uh, how to get this, this is a download from my website. This is called a psychrometric wheel calculator. And you use it to dial in the temperature and humidity. You, you slide these things like, like so. And what you'd see is that if, for example, it is 95 degrees outside, but it's only 40% relative humidity, that, if you were to cool that down to the temperature that we want it to, so 95 degrees, 40% relative humidity, uh, the dew point or the point at which it hits 100% relative humidity is 67 degrees. So when you cool it down to 70 degrees, it's going to be 90% relative humidity. So number one, let's imagine that it comes in 95 degrees, 40% relative humidity. It hits this ERV core, and that is going to take some of the temperature edge off and some of the humidity edge off. Let's say it goes through and it's 85 degrees, but still 40% relative humidity. That's still way too humid for your house. Uh, because even at 85 degrees, we're looking at... Uh, 85, 40, you're looking at, at 75 degrees, that's 63% relative humidity. Again, you, you need to dry that out. But the sensor here is going to say, oh, this, this air is 85 degrees, 
40% relative humidity. It doesn't even care about the 85. It's just going to take the 40 and it's going to say, great, 40 degrees, my set point is 50. I only start drying when it gets over 50. So that's number one. It's not going to know that it needs to dry this hair. Number two is in the winter time, when it's snowing outside and it's 30 degrees and 100% relative humidity comes in through this ERV core and let's say it warms up to 40 five degrees or whatever it is, um, but it's at 55% relative humidity, it's still, that's super dry because relative is relative to the temperature. The dehumidifier is going to be like, oh my God, 55% relative humidity, I need to dry. And that's not true because it's already super dry. All we need to do is warm the air, which it's already happening in this system, uh, and everything will be fine. So, so once the humidity makes it past this in that summertime uh, example, and it goes into the house, now it's too late. We can't actually have the dehumidifier dry this at all anymore because it already got past it and it's in the house. And now it's just cycling in here. That's not entirely true because we're going to need this. This bar right here represents extra air coming into the dehumidifier because an ERV most of the time is going to be 200 CFM or less. In fact, the biggest uh, ERV that I'm normally recommending is 210 CFM. So the ER, the dehumidifiers run from like 300 CFM up to maybe 500 CFM. So this is a much bigger machine. You can't just feed this machine off of the ERV. We're going to need to have an extra intake on this from the house. Whether that intake is after the humidity monitor or before the humidity monitor, and then how big this duct is and how much of the percentage of what this is drying comes from the house, you're still... It's, you're going to be playing catch up at some point. So that's why really, uh, in my experience, it's best to kind of decouple these things, make sure that they can all run, that they're flexible. They can reach out and grab things as they need and that they're not chained together in a long line because you just, it's hard to predict how these things are going to act until you've gotten to the point where you say, oh my gosh, something is terribly wrong. Like for me, I had my humidistat in this room that I just installed last week and I'm like, it's not working. I don't know why. I had to go in and tell the humidistat that it was running a dehumidifier, not a humidifier. So it was happy to turn on when it got over, uh, when it got under 50%, but it wouldn't turn on if the humidity was over 50%. Anyway, this is the kind of thing that like you start dealing with and you deal with complex systems is that like, it's just not going to get set up right. So you want to make sure that you think through all the uh, possibilities. If you guys have other thoughts about dehumidifiers or uh, other experience with this kind of a setup or kind of alternative uh, systems for this, feel free to comment below. I hope that you are subscribed. Um, there's lots of interesting things going on on this uh, YouTube channel lately. Tune in next time.